What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Really appreciate it. Going on a service call. I'm exhausted. I'm sorry. I'm not doing this. this. It's going to start to work. It was working. No, I just, I just turned off the switch because the boiler, right? There's a switch right here. And uh, no point in letting it. Okay. So now you have two zones calling. The automatic vent damper is opening. Once it opens, it'll get a signal. It'll send a signal to the safety circuit and it should energize the gas valve. And then you should have flame as long as you have pilot but it closed or closing now, which means something else. Okay, so let's try this first. No, nope, not that. And you have two zones calling. One is probably your water heater. I have like five uh, zones total. I, I Including the water heater. Uh, no. No, this is separate. No, that's like, separate. Have, that's a radiant zone, I think. Yeah, this is radiant. And then they have that's like a zone. Base, but everything else is like base <clears throat> oh, no, I thought that was an indirect yeah. water heater. Okay, that's a regular separate, water heater. Yeah, oh, I'm separate. sorry. 75 gallon with a big water heater. What do you have? 10 bathrooms? Or 10 kids? Uh, no, I have, <laughs> I have, I have kids that are out of the house. Let's troubleshoot this boiler. I got a jumper between TT, which is Y on our fan center relay. And I'm gonna put it to R. And when I do this, let's see what happens. Look at that. So that is now making a call for heat. And this white wire, which is connection to thermostat, whether or not it's one thermostat or four thermostats like you have over there. So this is suspect now, or the wire. So what we're gonna do now is jump out XX right there. And if that works, now we know that XX terminals on this expensive six zone switching relay yep. is toast. I hear you, I guess. So here is that switching relay. Let's go right to there. And this doesn't really carry any power, just a, an end switch. And that damper is open status. Oh, look at that. I didn't do anything there. But touching that, killed that. Damper's closing. And one more time, we know the six zone switch is six zone. Yeah. We know the six zone switching relay is toast. That is now closed position. And I didn't even touch it yet, but. We're gonna wiggle that next. There's the damper. Almost vertical. We hear the click of the gas valve. It's just like your videos. <laughs> <laughs> it's me! <laughs> okay, so let's take, it's rotating again. So let's take one right wire right there. Let's open again, so I'm not just going to leave that there. We definitely have a short behind there on that switching relay, and it's going to be a little short to replace all this, but it's got to get done. So, oh, look, see, it, it energized for a split second. You heard that gas valve click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's opening again, and let's see what it does. Because if it's not a constant, anytime there's a, even a brief interruption on that connection, it's called TT or XX. Right. It'll will okay. we we have we don't have that connection right now. Dan oh, now I just did it again. It's opening. <laughs> so it's just, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go like this, and we'll have heat now. It's an intermittent failure of the printed circuit board of the switching relay. Now that the wire is actually jumped, uh, it'll run. You need a new six zone switching relay. I know that when the boiler runs. It's intermittent, it's definitely not constant. But. Okay. I have all the wires removed except for zone five. Um, why not? Why didn't I do that yet? Just because I didn't do it yet. But I wanted to show you something. See those three slash marks? That's zone three, Got low it. voltage. Okay. You see four? Yes. That's zone four. Yes. That's one. Got 
Okay. That's two. That's TT. And I actually marked it TT. Okay. And down below, I did uh, I did little marks on each wire as well. Hopefully, it didn't get rub off. We're going to remove the incoming line voltage um, lock nut right there. We'll take off zone five. And I want to show you the back side of the board. We may or may not see anything exciting here, but you're getting a whole new box because there's the new one. It's in the truck. And that's what we do from the truck. All right, let's take a look at this. SR506, six on switching relay. Yeah, SR506, I was right, the numbers. Um, top is all low voltage. Bottom from ZR and ZC is all line voltage. This is where it comes in. So this, these far two right ones, the H and the N right there, um, that feeds everything. Regardless of one zone is on yeah, or all six of them on. And if you look behind yeah. it, yeah. there's that solder joint that failed. This is totally different. This isolated end switch, that is a glorified thermostat. That is the two wires that you showed me behind the thermostat there, the R and the W. That's all that is. XX is R and W. And when the thermostat is calling, the, the, the switch is closed. It's a basically, it's, it's, a, a, uh, it's an end switch and there's no voltage, non-contact end switch. And it just closes when one of those tell that. To, to close and that closes TT or XX and that closes the circuit on those two wires up and across. <laughs> Thank God I had nothing to do with this, right? Yeah, it's a bunch of rib relays there. And you know what? I have a guy, Daniel, he's very good at rib, rib relays. I'm not that advanced. <laughs> and that's where your TT he just is. wanted to show off. Yeah, I had an electrical engineer come here. He's like, yeah, let's put in some relays. Yeah, he wanted to show off. And it's a cheap way of, of doing things, but it works. Yeah. You know, especially his little, uh, his wire nuts on the leads on the transformer he didn't use. <laughs> All right, one through five are wired. Line voltage to circulators. One through five on my thermostat connections, R and C, and I kept the R to R, W to W, and there's our end switch, TT. There's a few of them there. There's one for main priority. And then the A, B, and C, that's your expansion. If you need to add another one of these here. Okay. Dum, 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 dum. Okay. You have a green light. We have two zones. We have a damper closing. And now it's going to open. Click at the relay on the gas valve, ignition. Voila. Amazing. Houston, we have ignition. Burnham, S-I-N-S, uh, sorry, 206, 164,000 BTUs of gross input. Manufacture date of July 2008. Not too shabby. It looks like we had a leak on that backflow prevention device at one point of its life. Takeo pressure reducing valve, expansion tank, going into our supply T, low water cutoff, thermostatic mixing valve for radiant zone, circulator, flow check, these are all flow checks. If you didn't have any flow checks, when one zone is on, you will have water being pulled from the return of other zones and you'll have phantom heat on the other zone. So you have flow checks on every single zone when there's more than one zone present on a hadronic system. That is a fancy old school 1950, 1960 valve Y. Those allowed you to have a two returns or two supplies going back to one. So we have two three quarter lines there with the one inch on the right hand side. Takeo high vent automatic air valve. Anything else out of the ordinary here? Nope. Good stuff. This little doodad right there, if you have no heat, that is a resettable sensor. That is a BVS or blocked vent switch, also known as your spill switch. If the exhaust gases are spilling out of the bottom of the draft diverter, 
that will sense that temperature of that hot exhaust gases and pop. Do you just reset it? By pushing it in, yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But not over and over and over again, you're going to make it a problem. There was one down here, similar, that's called a rollout switch. That's a ceramic fusible link. And when that senses a certain amount of temperature, it burns out and needs to be replaced after the issue is resolved. So these are all safeties. Yeah. You have, actually you have several safeties. You have one built into the vent damper. It knows when it's open. Okay. That's a safety. The, the uh, spill switch, the low water cutoff, rollout switch. High limit, you know, the high limit of the boiler. They're all safeties. That's more of a control Right, but it's also a safety. What, is, what should the aquastat? I remember somebody fussing with the aquastat on this guy at some point years ago. What's the right temperature for? So, the majority of the heat output output sources that you have in your home are probably convectors, baseboard, or radiators, yeah. and those are all based on the age of the house. Typically, they're measured. You know how many BTUs they can give you at a certain temperature. And that temperature is usually 180 degrees. If you were building a brand new house, for example, or renovating this house in its entirety, you have a boatload of cash to spend. You have radiant in-floor tubing yeah. with, you know, like the radiant zone you have there. Yeah, yeah. And your boiler, not this boiler, but a boiler would be set for about 120 degrees. And that 120 degree of temperature would heat the slab at about five and a half feet of elevation off that slab. And everything above that, <clears throat> yeah, they gradually get colder, but you don't need to heat eight foot ceilings. Right. Right. And that's why radiant is the most efficient way of heating a home with hot water. But, and you wouldn't use this boiler because if you set this boiler to 120 degrees, it would probably be dead in about a year. And there's a reason for that. The reason for that is the CS exhaust silver pipe, yeah. um, it carries the exhaust gases out the house, up the chimney, right? The components of the exhaust gases are, you know, maybe some carbon dioxide, you know, but it's, there's a large percentage of vapor, combustion gas vapor. And when that temperature of the exhaust temperature is cool off, that vapor is going to condense into a liquid. And when it condenses into a liquid, it will rot out all your, your chimney, for example, the flue pipe <clears throat> and the cast iron boiler. Because it's acidic. Yes. Yeah. And that's, <clears throat> excuse me, and that's why when in this area, in Long Island, Northeast, what have you, if you have oil, if you have oil heat, your house is built in the 30s, 20s, 50s, 60s, 70s, you have a terracotta lined or clay lined chimney liner for that exhaust gas because the exhaust temperatures on an oil boiler are north of 600 degrees. On a boiler, hydronic gas boiler, you're in the mid fours at, at, a, at a peak. There are some that are wasteful and they're at 600 degrees, 550 degrees, but your exhaust will never condense. So and then you have condensing boilers. Right. Right, which are these wall hung or these ones that sit on the floor that don't use a chimney that, that can power vent it outside and the exhaust temperatures are 110 degrees, 100, 100 degrees and those are condensing boilers because they're, they're thriving because they're condensing boilers, right? So if you made this a condensing boiler, you'll kill it. But if I put in old rain in your home, you wouldn't dare use this because you would need tons of these mixing valves everywhere and you need to cool off the water before it gets back to the boiler before you so you don't shock it. So was it, when this house was oil, was this the boiler in the house, or likely? No, no, this was a, this is a gas it's boiler. Only gas. If they didn't this, yeah. it, it doesn't have something. No, 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 no. It, the, the oil boilers look like oil boilers with a gas gun on it. This is a gas boiler. <laughs> so when they converted oil to gas. They ran the gas pipe. They put a new boiler in, and they ran all these all these zones, and they did a fairly good job. I'm sure someone did that black. I'm oh, sorry, the red wire holding up your flue for your. <laughs> what a heater at some point. And I actually had another service call after that six zone Taco switching relay replacement. It's uh, 6.20 here in the evening. I'm exhausted. Peter, Daniel, and I this morning, we installed a uh, 
a Burnham Steamax 100 steam boiler with two hydronic zones off the bottom of it. Then I went to Long Beach and I fixed a wall hung combi um, that had no domestic hot water. I had a piece of cocky stuck in the domestic hot water flow sensor. I'm exhausted. I really am. But thank you so much for watching. Let me get your thoughts and feedback in the comments section down below on the Taco. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the support. I'm walking the dogs. And when I get home after walking the dogs, I'm going to have some, some dinner. And I'm not even going to have any vodka or Don Julio 1942. I'm just going to have... Maybe a nice hot tea. Yep, hot tea. Catch you in the next one, guys. Thank you so much for your support. Be well. God bless. Stay safe.